ladies and gentlemen, is the Crosley Cruiser turntable. Uh, you can see these on sale in just about every department store. I've been out in town today and I've seen them in HMV. They're $79.99 in HMV. That's £79.99 for my American viewers. So I suppose about $100 maybe. Maybe a bit more than that. Um, you can get them much, much cheaper on Amazon uh, and eBay, stuff like that. I've seen them for about $49.99, i.e. £50. Um, yeah, I am going to speak in pounds today, I'm afraid. So, uh, yeah. Um, so what do you get for your £80? OK, well, it's a record player. It's an amplifier. In other words, it takes the uh, signal from the little tiny um, stylus that's uh, fitted to this thing. Um, all turntables have a tiny stylus, I have to say. Um, so that's not I'm not slagging it off there but uh, but yeah um, it takes it takes that signal and the amplifier um, then uh, makes that signal uh, big enough to be able to drive a pair of speakers okay um, and yeah um, so you've got an amplifier built in there and you've got a pair of speakers here uh, you can get the Crosley Cruiser Pro which has um, uh, also a USB facility in there so that you can uh, um, transfer your records to uh, digital files via a laptop or something like that um, <coughs> so that you can play them on your iPhones and whatnot okay um, so it seems like you're getting an, an awful lot of value for your money but in terms of sound reproducing equipment now I have to sort of um, kind of make an excuse for myself here I am a bit of a gadget geek okay and I'm a complete hi-fi geek um, and so uh, you know when I talk in terms of hi-fi sound um, I mean you know something that is akin to I mean my own my own sort of hi-fi setup is worth many 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 times the price of this thing even my record player uh, itself is you know was 1700 pounds with a cartridge on it um so so yeah uh, you know it's it's this is nowhere near in the same ballpark as that and my sort of uh reason for making this video is not to uh sort of say oh everybody spend that kind of money on a turntable but it's how do you get a turntable that will actually make your records sound good make you realize that they're much much better than digital downloads or cds okay and you know why are people saying you know records are much better you know you've got um shops nowadays that you know that previously shunned selling vinyl now selling it again okay and also it sells for quite high prices okay the if you were to go to hmv and buy the crosley cruiser for 80 pound then you could get three or four vinyl lps for that okay uh, you know they're because they're, they're kind of like over 20 pound each some of the some of these things are okay um yes you can go and buy secondhand stuff for you know maybe pence or, or a few pounds but um but yeah vinyl is expensive and therefore it deserves to be played on something that um <laughs> that is going to look after it okay so okay what's is kind of you know stopping the Crosley Cruiser from looking after your records okay because it will actually ruin your records okay let's have a look let's let's uh, first of all in the in the hi-fi and um, and audio world less is more okay the fact that you're buying here uh, a turntable, an amplifier and speakers all in one package here uh, means that the amount of uh, budget that you're paying for those is, you know, probably about sort of a, a couple of pound each, really, once they've sort of factored in the materials that it's made from and um, all the overheads and stuff and, and whatnot else. You're probably, you know, probably less than a five of development budget has gone on you know the whole thing 
Okay, now we've got a record on there at the moment, so you can't actually see the turntable platter that that's sitting on. But um, I've seen people do teardowns of these things. I would do one myself if I could bring myself to spend the £80 on buying the thing. Um, but uh, that turntable platter is plastic. Okay, it's, it's thin plastic. Um, a turntable uh, platter, you should be able to pick it up with two hands, not one hand and be able to wave it around and, um, and, and, and have it flop all over the place, okay? It won't support your records very well when they're being played, okay? And even the, you know, the platter and the materials that it's made from will have an influence on the sound quality, okay? Um, so that platter, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a pathetic wee piece of plastic um, very very flimsy okay look at it look at it you can't even play it a, a record with the lid down either because the, the record goes over the edge of the uh, uh, of the main deck um, and uh, you know because of that you know your your records are going to get dust on them as they go around because vinyl is a dust magnet okay um, and once you start getting dust on your records they start getting cracklier and poppier and you know it's very very hard to get that clean and i can imagine that someone that's spending 80 quid on this uh, is not going to spend any money on you know buying stuff to clean their records with you know like a disco anti stat or something like that which will cost you 30 or 40 pound um you know so you know your records are going to get ruined very very quickly just by the fact that you can't play it with the lid down and thereby you know sort of sealing it away from dust as the record spins round dust will land on it okay if you if you sort of had the record still on there, you know, just left it on the on the on the turntable platter, it would get dust landing on it, but it would get more from the record actually moving round. Okay, so you should, uh, you know, not really take that lid with you know any seriousness at all. It looks funky, it looks groovy, but it's not going to, um, it's not going to protect your records in any way. Okay, um, so a the platter is, you know, it, it it's not worth. You know talking about really okay let's have a look at the tone arm itself okay i don't know if um the my screen recording software is moving my mouse pointer okay on the um any tone arm okay uh in order to be able to play a record you need to fit a cartridge okay the cartridge here is this sort of black and red thing okay and onto that cartridge there is a stylus okay let's start with the stylus the thing that's actually uh, playing the records now any um, stylus worth its salt should be made from diamond and you can get some very very cheap um, diamond styli around you know sort of from you know a, sort of 20 30 pounds okay um, I would imagine it I'm, I'm not told but I would imagine from what else I know about this cartridge um, that it's probably not made of diamond, it's probably made of sapphire, okay? Sapphire is a very weak um, sort of material for playing records, okay? It will wear out very, very quickly, okay? The slightest bit of fluff or, um, or, or, or crackle on your record will cause it to wear out even quicker. A worn stylus then playing a record that is not damaged will damage it, okay? Um, <coughs> I don't know whether the actual um, cartridge is what we call a moving magnet cartridge. Again, moving magnet cartridges are good, okay? You can get some extremely good moving magnet cartridges, okay? But it's probably not a moving magnet cartridge. It's probably what we call a ceramic cartridge, okay? Which coupled with the fact that the stylus or, or the stylus tip is made of, you know, probably made of sapphire, um, is uh is not good okay um ceramic cartridges are like is, is like sending uh you know compared to you know how delicate those grooves are on the record okay and we'll, we'll come back and we'll talk about that again in a minute but um uh, a, a ceramic cartridge is like sending a train down a ski slalom slope Okay, um, it won't be able to navigate the grooves very well. Okay, you will get a very, very poor treble response um, and no bass response to speak of.
okay um so yeah that cartridge there is worth is is, is not worth anything okay um now at the back of this tone arm here uh you've got th this sort of plastic housing here um there will be a counterweight in there to try and make sure that the uh, the stylus is sort of tracking um and, and keeping everything level and parallel okay um but it's non-adjustable okay um any turntable worth its salt um and i'm not talking about you know mega bucks here at all but any turntable worth its salt will have uh, some sort of um mechanisms at the back so that you can adjust um the tracking weight yourself okay the tracking weight is uh, how much force the the cartridge is placing on the record okay now i've read a review um from in what hi-fi magazine what hi-fi magazine is not the best hi-fi magazine on in on the planet but they don't tell lies um and uh it's it's saying that this is placing a weight of over seven grams onto every record that's being played okay now you know given the fact that um uh those grooves are so so small you can't see them with the naked eye okay um you know uh, there are they are mega 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 tiny so placing seven grams onto a record you might as well sort of say you know we're going to put a double decker bus on top of your head that's the level of it okay <laughs> in sort of comparison to you know what's what's going on to that record okay um and again um, you know, even, uh, you know, a cheap turntable will, um, will kind of not place anything like that on them. The, the first, the first, um, turntable that I got was a second hand uh, turntable from a manufacturer called Goldring Lenko. Uh, and it was a vintage turntable from the late sixties, early seventies. Okay. And the man who sold it to me, again sold it to me for 70 pounds okay which is cheaper than a high street crossley cruiser okay um it didn't come with an amplifier and speaker so i had to plug in plug them into separate amplifier and speakers but i already had that so it wasn't a problem um but uh yeah the the, the cartridge that came with that tracked at i believe something like two grams okay and two grams is heavy to place on a record okay um most cartridges that you buy these days will track uh, under two grams some something like sort of between 1.5 and 1.8 grams so to have seven grams placed on your record is going to wear it out it's going to be like playing it with a drill okay with a pneumatic drill okay or you know like you with a bus on your head just you know just just imagine that okay there's no way to adjust the weight there's no way to change that cartridge for anything better, okay? Um, I suspect it needs that because there's nothing there in terms of the turntable platter or anything else that is going to keep that record from sort of staying flat and, and sort of playing, you know, um, it, because, it, because the whole thing is so flimsy, okay? Um, and part of it, again, comes back to the fact that you are expecting too much for your money okay this is the price of um four cheaper vinyl lps okay um it's you know it, it, it's really nothing okay it will not show you what vinyl can do okay now the the turntables that i'm going to show you in a minute um Yes, you know they 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 play records well. They again, then they're not going to draw out every single nuance of of, of vinyl replay, okay? Because you know turntables go up to thousands and thousands of pounds, okay? And the ones that I'm gonna show you um, are sort of in the hundreds of pounds rather than thousands. So it does mean that you need to save your pocket money, okay? Don't go out to the pub or whatever it is you do that um you know uh, that is your leisure budget save it up for a few months okay buy a separate turntable a separate amplifier and speakers okay um this thing here um just keep it as far away from your records as you possibly can okay um 
you know, that they <sighs> hmm. Okay, <laughs> right. Okay, so I'm not going to start off by showing you a turntable. I'm going to show you an amplifier. I'm going to show you a cheap hi-fi amplifier, uh, well-regarded um, Onkyo uh, or a Japanese manufacturer. Okay, they, um, they've been in hi-fi for a long time. Okay, so this is an amplifier. Okay, now look at that. Okay, now somewhere inside this, there will be an amplifier. OK, uh, but it's it's you know, you can you can pick the thing up with a carrying handle. OK, an amplifier is heavy. OK, um, this is this is the Onkyo A9010. OK, um, I've seen it online for one hundred and seventy nine pounds. OK, so that is just over two Crosley Cruiser record players. OK. Now, um, the reason you need an amplifier is, as I said, because something has got to pick up those tiny, tiny little sort of modulations in the groove, okay, and make that signal big enough to drive a pair of speakers, okay? Um, not all amplifiers have the facility to be able to do this, but I'm happy to say this Onkyo does, okay? Um, <coughs> I don't know if I can actually zoom in on this. Um, oh, yes, I can, just about. OK, um, so, yeah, what, what, what does it actually have? Uh, that's a muting button there and that's something else which I don't know. Uh, but here, this this thing here called Phono, OK, is uh, is what we call a Phono stage. OK, um, the the signal from a micro groove uh, record, play, record, sorry, um, is very, very small. OK, even from a moving magnet cartridge, it's very small. Um, it needs a dedicated uh, special socket on an amplifier to be able to uh, magnify that up to um, levels that are big enough for you to hear it. OK, so although physically the plugs look the same um, on these other sockets here, which we'll talk about in a second, um, these are these will not. Uh, amplify the sound enough okay um, they're diff different electrical characteristics as well you need to make sure that you, uh, whatever record player you buy that it gets plugged into this socket labeled phono okay not all amplifiers have them so make sure that whatever amplifier you buy does it has on it um, five what we call line level um, uh, inputs as well which means that you can plug anything into it from a cd player to a dvd player to a games console um or any anything like that even a radio a, a separate hi-fi separate radio okay um and it's 179 pounds which means you know again it's not going to be the ultimate in hi-fi but what it will do is enough to make you realize what records are capable of and also via all the other sockets what n kind of noise your cds are actually making or your iphone really okay because uh, you know people you know they don't realize you know, exactly what's um what music is capable of doing what re you know good music reproduction is is actually capable of and this will give you some idea okay um <coughs> this little knob here to the right of the indicator lights uh, is a um it will just sort of toggle between whichever uh, input you have here okay um this is a loudness thing here which basically means that at low levels uh, maybe you're playing at night, it will boost the bass and stuff like that. Those sorts of things are best left switched off. OK. Um, and, you know, again, you know, it's a bit it, it, this amplifier. If you were to criticize it, it is suffering slightly from Crosley Cruiser syndrome in that it's, it, it's possibly doing too much for your money. You don't need a loudness button, okay? Likewise, over here, you don't really need bass and treble controls, okay? And most uh, sort of really high-end amplifiers um, or even bass, bass spec audiophile amplifiers will not give you bass and treble and balance controls either. The bass and treble will do uh, what they suggest. You're turning the bass up will 
make you hear the bass a bit more, turning it down will make you not hear the bass so much. And the same with the treble, i.e. the high frequencies here. The balance basically means that if you haven't got your speakers set up sort of in a sort of symmetrical way, you can kind of um, use that to kind of move the stereo image slightly to the left or the right. Again, you don't need it. OK, you just set your speakers up properly, um, which we'll talk about in a, in a, in a few minutes. Um, and this sort of heavy control here in the middle is um, is, is, is a volume control. OK, um, it does have some sort of uh, fairly uh, audio grade parts here. We've got uh, some decent capacitors in there by the looks of things and a large uh, electrical transformer here as well. OK, it's, it's nice and hefty. OK, and that is the heart, really, of any sound system. OK, um, as I say, um, with the record players that I'm going to suggest uh, for sort of considering to, to purchase here, um, you need to plug them into an amplifier and then into a pair of speakers before um, before you'll hear the record player. OK, so it does mean saving up. OK, but that's one hundred and seventy nine pound. It's a reasonably priced uh, budget audiophile um, hi fi. And uh, as you can see, it's won a few magazine awards as well for whatever that's worth. OK, um, uh, it's not always easy today to hear equipment before you um, before you buy it. I would suggest that you do. OK, but these days trying to find shops on the high street that will sell this stuff, uh, it's quite it's quite hard. OK, uh, you'll get, um, you know, sort of dedicated hi-fi shops that will sell stuff at 10 times the price of that. Um, you know, in my amplifier was, you know, four times the price of that. Is it four times the price of that? Maybe five times the price of that. Um, and yeah, I could go into the shop and I could hear it, but um, but you know, trying to find somewhere, um, you, you used to have like uh, the Curry's and PC World kind, or not PC World, but Curry's and Dixon style kind of shops on the high street, Radio Shack, for those American viewers um, that would actually uh, let you hear this stuff, but. You can't nowadays. You have to take that one on trust, but it's not too much money to lose if you don't like the sound of it. You, you can upgrade these things. The beauty of buying things separately is that you can play them for a little while, keep them for a few years, sell them on eBay, buy something better if the hi-fi bug takes you. But I'm I'm dedicating this video to people that want to play music well, okay? Um, and so I'm probably more into music than they are into hi-fi and gadgets, okay? All right, so that's that amplifier there. Um, now, uh, when we look at uh, speakers, we'll go to some speakers next, I think. Um, again, um, <coughs> these tiny little speakers here on this are just not going to cut it, okay? For a start, they're stereo speakers, but they're so close together that you won't get any kind of uh, semblance of... Um, of, of stereo they're so tiny that you won't hear any bass the sound from this is muffled it's confused it's tinny um you know coupled with the fact that it's also wearing out your records far quicker than they need than they need to wear out okay i've got records from the 1950s um that actually you know play beautifully um because they've been looked after uh this sort of you know that thing is, to, is is not going to do it and those speakers are you know they're just nothing again okay um you know if they put out a fraction of a watt um you know uh coupled with the amplifier then you know oh no 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 okay so let's have a look at some speakers now i'm actually now on uh, richer sounds uh, which in the uk at any rate is they take last year's product OK, and uh, sell it at discount rates. OK, you can see them on the high street. Um, there's one on the same street as my favourite shop, Audio T in Brighton. Um, and uh, yeah, um, you can get some very, very good bargains on here for speakers. You see, I'm looking at these Wharfdale Diamond 9s here that have a recommended price of £60 being sold for £39. OK, again, those speakers are not going to be, you know, the any kind of word in hi-fi but they will do the job okay they will they will sound one hell of a lot better than the than the crosley cruiser speakers okay um 
far better from what I can actually see on the screen here. It's pro probably these Tannoy Mercuries here for £70, okay? With these little bookshelf speakers, you must buy stands with them, okay? Uh, you can see some stands in the background, or you could see some stands in the background until I hovered my mouse over it. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you've got to put them on stands. You can't just leave them on the floor or shove them on top of a cupboard because they'll just, they'll just resonate and sound horrible, okay? Um, but uh, these Tannoy Mercuries look like quite a good deal here. Again, they were £120 reduced to £70. Uh, factor in maybe £50 for a pair of stands and you've got yourself um, a, a reasonable pair of speakers to be able to hear records from, okay? Um, I wouldn't, I'm not really into Q acoustic speakers. Uh, they look a bit flimsy and um, kind of, you know, downtrodden to me. These Wharfdale Diamonds 220 are uh, sort of uh, well respected. Um, what else am I looking at here? Uh, Cambridge Audio ones here. Okay, the Tannoy Precisions here again. I mean, that's a jolly good deal. That those speakers were nine hundred pounds reduced to three nine nine, but that's probably too much for someone that's thinking of buying a Crossley Cruiser. Um, so you know, I I would say that probably you know a nice compromise really is po possibly something like these Tannoy Mercury V ones. Okay, um, they've got a six year guarantee as well. Okay, um, and you know, a couple of those with some stands and they will just sound absolutely amazing, okay, with this amplifier. The amplifier is 179 pounds. You don't really wanna spend more than your amplifier on speakers, okay, um, if you can possibly help it, all right? Um, at least not at this budget end of the market. It's slightly different when you're talking about spending, you know, maybe, you know, <laughs> Um, you know, nearly a thousand pound on an amplifier and then your speakers, but certainly not um, when you're looking at, you know, a hundred odd pounds, something like that. Okay, so these Tannoy Mercuries will do the job. Okay, and Tannoy are a brilliant, um, are, are a brilliant make anyway, and you know, make speakers that are worth, you know, much, much more than that. Okay, so we've got an amp and we've got our speakers. Okay, that means that now, um, you know, you can plug your iPhones in, you can plug your games consoles, your DVDs, all via those line-in sockets, um, and your CDs as well, obviously. Okay, um, so what kind of record player do you want to put with that? Okay, they will make, you know, any sound source that you put into them sound, you know, really, really beautiful, really, really nice. OK, um, so, you know, and, and you'll you, you'll play those and you'll think, oh, it's just fantastic. You know, you know, all, all the stuff that you've got already. OK, so a record player is really the icing on the cake. OK, um, and if I were buying this, I would get the amplifier and the speakers first. OK, um, and then I would see about my source components. OK, if I wanted a record player, then, um, you know, I, I would do that after. I've got the um, I, I've got the the heart of the system, the amplifier and the speakers. Okay, okay. So you know you're probably sort of dreading, you know, what I'm going to say here. Okay. Um, now my favourite hi-fi manufacturer and you know the one that my system is made up of um, is from a company called Riga. Um, they're a United Kingdom-based company. Sadly, that means that, you know, places like the Ameri like the States and, you know, Europe and stuff like that, they pay a little bit more for them. But, okay, look at this, okay. This Riga RP1, okay, this little record player here, uh, already, oh, well, where, what am I doing? I'm trying to sort of click and show you things and the website's moving around and stuff. But um, I'll do my best. Okay, this is Turntable World. I've never seen this before, but I Googled Riga RP1. And rather than going to the Riga website, I, I clicked on this just because I saw the price of it. Okay, um, this is normally, uh, in its base spec model, it's normally just over £300. But this website, Turntable World, uh, seems to be doing them much, much cheaper than that. This They're saying £229, okay, which is very, very reasonable. It's three Crosley Cruisers. OK, three Crossley Cruisers, that's all it is. OK, um, what does it have on it? 
First of all, it has a turntable platter that um, th that is nice and chunky and weighty, okay, with a felt tone uh, uh, turntable mat on it. Again, felt turn uh, turntable mats. Audio files will argue to the to the nth degree about what the best material is for a, you know for a turntable mat, but a felt turntable mat will do the job. Um, Riga provide felt turntable mats on all of their turntables, including their RP10, um, which is three and a half thousand pounds. Okay, so um, you know it's yeah it, 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 it's fine. Okay, so what have we got? We've got a, a, a thick turntable uh, platter. Now you've got um, again in in the hi-fi world, less is more. Okay, on this Crosley Cruiser, uh, you can just about see that you know to the right of the turntable rest there are some switches and those will switch the speed between 33 45 and 78 well for a start you know some teenager that's buying a hi-fi system and wants to buy records is not going to want to buy 78s okay unless they're into collecting vintage stuff from the 1940s and 50s you're not going to want to play 78s that stylus will not play a 78 record okay it's not good enough to play 78 records okay and then once you've played if, if you do try and play a 78 record on it and then go back to playing your 45s and 33s um you're gonna ruin you've ruined your stylus okay by playing a 78 the, with the grooves are much much bigger um on those 78 rpm records you need a special turntable uh, a special stylus to play them on okay uh, you could probably buy one for this uh, you'd have to keep switching it in and out, which, you know, you're opening up to damage and stuff like that from doing it. But, you know, so there's no point in having that 78 RPM speed on there. OK, but you've got a little button there to, for your speeds. Now, coming back to this RP1. OK, and again, this is all um, Riga turntables and also, you know, from other manufacturers as well. OK, um, at this level, at this level, um, it will play 33s and 45s, okay? All Riga turntables, apart from a turntable that they especially make for 78 records, only plays 33 and 45s because, you know, a single, a little seven inch single, they all play at 45 RPM. Albums play at, um, at 33 and a third RPM, okay? And you don't, most people, you know, probably play albums okay they probably never i hardly ever switch mine to 45 i've got a couple of albums that play at 45 um for uh, technical reasons you know some some um uh, brand new albums uh, have been mastered um as a double album that plays at 45 to try and uh, increase sound quality still further but um but for this <coughs> kind of money here you haven't got a button that will um, that will switch between 33 and 45. What you have to do is lift the turntable platter off and flick the belt to a different gear. Okay, it takes it's takes less time than it takes me to describe it. Okay, to do it. Okay, um, it's very very quick, very very easy. Um, but it's manual. Okay, uh, because you know the buttons to do these things. Um, tend to, t to uh, take circuit circuitry which costs money to produce and also at this uh, sort of level of, of the budget will also have an impact on the sound quality so Riga would rather you didn't do that okay you just flick the bell over onto another gear okay um, that yeah uh, that turntable will just lift off okay there's no there's no sort of jiggery pokery there lift it off flick it over put the thing back OK, then play your record. All right. Um, it does have a very it's, it's got Riga's most basic tone arm on, which means that, you know, when you buy it in, in the box, um, you have to fit the counterweight at the back. OK, that counterweight is making sure that the cartridge is tracking at the right weight. OK, um, in, in terms of, you know, how heavy it's putting on the record. If you remember, I said that the Crosley Cruiser, the turntable was you know, the, the, the tone arm and the cartridge were placing a seven gram tra uh, tracking weight on that record, okay? Um, now, uh, the basic spec RP1, I think the cartridge, this is called a Rega Carbon cartridge, okay? And I think it tracks at two grams, 
okay, uh, which is a little bit heavier than most Riga cartridges, but it's this, that is, you know, the absolute bargain basement, okay. Um, <coughs> uh, you, there, there's, you know, some very basic fitting instructions to fit the counterweight at the back and to set it up uh, to play uh, records and making sure that the cartridge is really placing two grams of, of force on your, on, on your records, but it's very, very simple okay um you just screw the the counterweight in um so that it's uh sort of lined up with a marker on the on the uh, tone arm uh on on the main tone arm body um and then uh you have to set the anti-skating weight uh which is again very very simple uh it's just a case of uh, pulling a little sliding lever and then leaving it okay um and and it will do okay um so that's 229 pound from turntable world okay and it's a million 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 times away uh better than the crosley cruiser okay um to upgrade uh there's something here called the riga rp1 performance pack which is 298 pounds again the recommended price of that is more like four hundred pounds. So you're, you're looking at saving, you know, a good hundred pounds here. You're getting Riga's basic audio file cartridge with this. Okay, uh, I think you get a better belt with it as well. Um, but basically, um, you're you're getting a cartridge which tracks at one point seven five grams. It's called the Riga Bias Two, um, and uh, that cartridge on its own is worth about 85 pound i believe okay so um so yeah that's a you know a, a very good sort of basic record player to go with this amp and maybe these tannoy speakers here okay um so that's the Riga RP1 with performance pack um that's you, you know that would be my choice of turntable okay uh but uh, when I was sort of fiddle faffling around with this Onkyo amplifier and this on Onkyo website, I came across this turntable here. Okay, it's a bit more expensive than the RP1. It's £369. Okay, I suppose that's about $500. Um, and it's what we call a direct drive turntable. Okay, uh, most uh, turntables, including most budget ones, are driven by belts, okay, called belt drive turntables, okay, and if you remember, um, I said that to f change the speed on the Riga RP1, you have to lift the turntable up and flick the belt over, okay, uh, this does not include, this is not a belt drive turntable, this is what we call a direct drive turntable, okay, which is basically, uh, instead of having belts that couple a motor to a sub platter, the, um, and then putting you put the turntable sort of platter on top of the sub platter, okay. Um, with the, with this direct drive one, the motor is directly attached to the sub platter underneath the main sort of turntable uh, platter thing, um, and uh, it drives it, it it drives it from there. Okay, they do have some advantages over belt drive. Uh, the speed is much more consistent, which means that. Um, they'll be a lot more rhythmic, but in terms of um, sort of sonic finesse and delicacy, um, you need a jolly, jolly good direct drive turntable to be able to um, to sort of give you, you know, beautiful detail and, you know, sort of that kind of see-through um, sort of, um, I'm trying to think of the word here, but I suppose presence. You know, with, with, with vinyl, you can actually, you know, watch as it were you know it, it it's like getting a sort of 3d hologram in front of you and you can actually touch the instruments touch the performers you know it it really feels like you could do that okay uh direct drive i think you, you know to get that kind of realism you need to actually pay a lot more than 369 pounds but again here you're getting a good enough turntable to show what vinyl can do okay um <coughs> again it has an adjustable uh tone arm here so that you can put any cartridge on it comes with a cartridge it doesn't say what kind of cartridge it is apart from the fact that it's a moving magnet cartridge which is a lot better than the tiny little crappy ceramic thing that's uh on the crosley 
Okay, I believe it's a ceramic cartridge. Even even if it's a moving magnet cartridge, it's a, it's you know one that just deserves to go in the bin. Okay, because it, it because the tracking weight's so heavy on it. Okay, um, we're not told what force this tracks at in in the specifications. I did try and look. Okay, but just uh, there's just um, you know just something to be slightly wary of here, and it's uh, it's here. Okay. Um, Right, okay, so built to deliver audio, uh, affordable audio file grade sound, that's fine, I, I don't disagree with that. Stable direct drive system, yep, that's uh, brilliant. C customized brushless DC motor, that's great. Quartz lock con control system for high precision rotation. So in other words, all of that is basically saying that it's going, uh, that, that, that the speed is absolutely constant, okay? With belt drive, um, especially at the cheaper end of the range, um, you know, it, it's difficult to get, um, uh, you know, a, an exact kind of, um, uh, you know, exactly 33 and a, and a third and exactly 45 RPM. Um, that's not to say that um, the, uh, that the Riga RP1 being belt drive will wobble, it won't, okay? But it won't be as as rhythmic as this uh, in, in terms of its sound, okay? The Crossley will probably wobble all over the place. You'll probably hear, you know, speed instability times, you know, a, a million on it, okay? Um, which, which will sort of represent, you know, if you put any kind of piano music on there, then it will sound like, you know, boo! kind of kind of sort of wobbly around uh, and you'll be able to hear it okay that was a stupid noise sorry i shouldn't have made that noise <laughs> but but you know so so what are we looking wow and flutter that's that's uh, again related to the speed stability wow is low um it, it, it is sort of bass note instability which is which does give you that ooh sound and flutter is like a high pitch kind of burbly sound okay um and that's less than nop 0.15% which means that's an incredibly low uh, wow and flutter rate so in other words it will be spot on with its speed okay um, we have an aluminium static balance s-shaped tone arm okay again um, you know audiophile nuts will kind of argue you know to their blue in the face about whether or not a straight tone arm as appears on the Riga tone arms all the Riga tone arms are straight here um, or whether or not, hold on, where we're looking. Whether or not this kind of S shape is um, is better. Um, you know, some hi-fi turntables have an S shape. Some have have um, have straight um, things. And again, it's you know, it swings and roundabouts. It's you know, um, it, it's it's what you prefer. And I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't say that that's a you know, good or bad. Okay. Um, the moving magnet cartridge here. Uh, doesn't say what it is, as I said. Um, but when we're looking at the actual specifications here, okay, it says that the tone arm uh, can be upgraded with um, an aftermarket cartridge, okay. Although I would never pay more than two thirds the price of the tone table for a cartridge, okay. So this one, I would say, will take a moving magnet cartridge up to about two hundred pounds. Um, you know, if you wanted to upgrade it, the, the cartridge on there is not going to be worth more than about 30 or 40 pound. OK, um, so, yes, there is scope to upgrade it. OK, it says here between five and 10 grams. Now, that is not the tracking weight. That's the actual weight of the cartridge. OK, the tracking weight um, uh, is the amount of force that the, that the tone arm is placing on the record. OK, um, the uh, the weight of the cartridge is different, okay? Um, the weight of the cartridge is balanced out by the counterweight at the back, okay? Basically, you put the counterweight on, um, you get it to uh, a point where it kind of floats above the record in a straight line, and then you apply between one and two grams of tracking weight um, so that the cartridge will actually land on top of the record. You'll be shown how to do it in the instructions in um, in, in with the box it's not a difficult thing to do it takes about five minutes once you're set up you're set up for good okay um, so yeah this looks like a pretty good record player okay uh, but it doesn't tell you anything about the cartridge and I would say that you know um, 
once you've got it for a little while and you want to do any upgrading or whatever, upgrade the cartridge on there. Get something like a Riga Bias 2 or um, an Autophon 2M Red or 2M Blue and that would be fantastic with, with, with this um, turntable. Okay, um, as I say, it wouldn't be my choice uh, out of those two. I would, I would definitely go with this RP1. Uh, it's much, much cheaper okay even with with the upgraded cartridge on there and i would i would go for that upgrade cartridge on there um <coughs> in terms of actually where you put it you have to be a bit careful with any turntable including this thing okay you have to be very very careful um uh this does have sort of a, a fairly substantial plinth on it OK, the plinth being the wooden bit that everything's bolted onto. Um, but, um, it, you know, I wouldn't put it on top of a cupboard. I wouldn't put any hi-fi equipment on top of a cupboard. OK, um, possibly something like a sturdy coffee table. As long as that uh, sturdy coffee table is flat and straight, you know, you download a, a spirit level on your mobile phone and, you know, just sort of play around until you can get that turn that the supporting table straight okay um you know i've you know, put even put little bits of cardboard or coins or something underneath on the legs just think you know because i like for example, my floor's not straight for example okay i've got a a, a dedicated hi-fi rack that um with, with spikes on it that will adjust so that you can get the um, the rack to be level but you know just with a with a basic coffee table style thing um i would you know ju i'd just use bits of cardboard or something like that and just make sure that you can get that record player absolutely flat and absolutely straight okay um and then um you know bob Chiranti. okay now just before i disappear um oh oh well, yeah, this is this is what I was going to show you here before I disappear. And I know I've probably gone on for absolutely ages here and I'm really sorry if I have and bored the hell out of you. But, I, you know, I'm just really passionate about making sure that people don't waste their money on crap like the Crosley. Um, sorry. Sorry, Crosley. You'll sue me. I know. But, you know, whatever. Um, this this here is called the Project RPM One Carbon. It's about the same price as the Onkyo. OK. Um, I is it higher grade, lower grade? I don't know. Horses for courses, okay? Um, this has had sort of pretty good reviews um, in in Hi-Fi magazines. Um, I'm, I've got one open in front of me in Hi-Fi World magazine from 2015, from March 2015. Um, and yeah, it gets, a, it, it gets a reasonably good review. Um, I wouldn't say... Um, it, the, 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 the project turntables in general they don't get you know the same sort of um good press as the Rigas do okay with this one i would say there's probably a reason why okay and it goes to, back to my um to my magazine review here where it says that projects recommend that you place this on um a, a wooden board on a sturdy wooden board and it says thereby making a high mass plinth guys this thing here i.e this bit of plastic um that is supporting the crosley turntable and the knobs and buttons here this thing here is a plinth okay as you can see here you can't even get the lid down with the record player on, with, with with the record on top of it but that's a plinth basically okay this thing here where's it gone this thing here has a plinth okay the sort of boxy bit there for it to stand on okay for the turntable to stand on okay um with this project thing here oh hold on that's a plinth that wooden bit of board there okay um is with with riga they believe in um the the actual platter has to be heavy the plinth doesn't the plinth doesn't have to be very heavy at all it just has to be rigid okay and the higher up in the range you go the more bizarre materials that they use to give you um a very lightweight but absolutely rigid and non-breakable plinth okay um, so that it can dissipate um sort of sound vibrations and stuff like that it's all sort of a bit kind of geeky i suppose but um this thing here doesn't really have a plinth to speak of 
okay so you're paying 300 pound odd and they're still saying you've got to get a decent wooden board to place that on which basically means again spending money okay um you can get wooden proper hi-fi um sort of uh supports for hi-fi equipment you know like sort of shelving units that are actually designed to take hi-fi not so that it looks nice in your modern ikea lounge but so that it provides um yeah, a, a proper support so that you only hear the equipment and you don't hear the vibrations of everything else in your room. Um, you know, so that you can walk into a room and dance up and down to your music and not have your uh, tone arm jump everywhere or your CD laser skip everywhere because of footsteps and that sort of thing. And it kind of isolates everything. And it also does a pretty good job of keeping your neighbours happy as well because you don't get awful vibrations going through rooms and stuff like that. Um, so this is basically if you've got yourself a decent hi-fi rack that has wooden shelves on it. Mine has glass ones, but if you have wooden shelf on it, you know, and it's, it's expensive again. OK, I bought mine back in the late 90s and it was about £250 um, for um, the, uh, that, that hi-fi stand. And out of all the, the stuff that, you know, that, that I've got, it's by far the heaviest. Um, yeah, it's absolutely it's it's it's. It's, it's, it's bricks to carry you know it's really it's even heavier than my speakers it's you know um and you know that's the kind of support that 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 this project will need uh in in terms of you know um making sure that um it's giving its best in terms of sound quality okay so it's basically a like half a turntable there and that's why i believe that this is not getting the kind of reviews that you know, you would you would hope that it would get okay. It'll sound okay if you place it on a coffee table, I'm sure, but it wouldn't give it its best. Okay, I don't like the idea of that V shape. I just don't like it at all. It just doesn't doesn't appeal to me at all. Okay, and finally, 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 for my um, American viewers here, because I've watched a few American uh, people, you know, with videos on their their vinyl collections and stuff like that. Um, where's the picture gone of this thing? I ha oh I have got trouble with my internet. It keeps jump. It keeps sort of dropping the connection, and it's lost this picture. Um, it might come back in a minute, but this is the AT LP one twenty USB. Okay, uh, you can get one. I think that doesn't have the USB out, but um, if you don't want to make digital transfers of your of your vinyl. Um, to play on your iPhone, which you know, why would you? When you when you hear what records really sound like, um, you'll find that you know actually um, you won't want to make too many transfers. I do for YouTube. Um, I occasionally make transfers for friends as well, but you know you don't need this gubbins here. You don't need anything special inside the record player to be able to do that. Okay, I'm just gonna see if I can refresh this page now. So and get a picture of this thing. There, there we go. The um, the eighty LP one hundred and twenty. Anyway, um, so if you can get it without it, it'll be a tiny bit cheaper. What is it saying? Two hundred ninety nine dollars ninety five. Okay, so I suppose it makes it in about the same price as that Onkyo turntable of about sort of three hundred odd pounds uh, in English money. Okay, maybe three fifty pounds in English money. Um, and yeah, again, uh, you know, it's it's a direct drive turntable. So I suppose in in a in a sense, it is the the kind of US equivalent of that uh, Onkyo turntable um, for. Uh, I suppose a, a, a relatively similar kind of price. No, it's not three hundred pounds. It's cheaper. What am I doing? Maths, PSC maths. Um, yeah, it's uh, something like maybe two hundred and twenty pounds, something like that. So price-wise, it compares with the Riga, but in terms of technical specifications and stuff, it's, it compares more with the Onkyo. Um, and I think. That that's you know again you know especially if you're um, in in the states that's probably a good bet for a turntable. Audio Technica um, are a hi-fi make. They make some very good cartridges um, f uh, for playing records. Okay, all right. So to sum up this video, basically you know instead of a Crosley Cruiser, use some of your leisure but leisure budget, shove it to one side, save up. Okay. First of all, buy an amplifier, then buy some speakers, okay? 
try out your CD, uh, your CDs or your iPhone through it or something like that, just to see what it sounds like. OK, if you're going to buy some speakers, if you're going to buy stand mount speakers, get stands for them. But again, you can get some cheap floor standing speakers, which will take up just about the same amount of space in your um, in your lounge. Once you consider you know, putting a, a pair of uh, stand mount speakers on a pair of stands. OK, set it up nicely. OK, if you want a record player as well. My choice would be the Riga RP1 with the performance pack. That would be my choice, okay? But there are other choices here. Um, you know, if I was in the States um, and I had a very, very limited budget, I would buy that ATLP20. Um, otherwise, you know, for me, you know, if I had, you know, just that tiny budget and all I wanted to do was play records to a decent standard, I would be looking at that RP1 with performance pack um, or the Onkyo, okay? Um, if I got the bug, which I have got the bug um, and I have, you know, obviously over the years I've upgraded my Hi-Fi and, uh, and upgraded it. I would go for something like a Riga RP10. I haven't got an RP10, by the way, but this is the Riga RP10 just for those that want to actually see it before I disappear. OK, where are we looking at? Let's go to riga.co.uk. Uh, are we actually going to get a gallery, a picture of it? OK, there we go. You see, look, this is what I'm saying about their plinths and how they've managed to make their plinths you know, out of bizarre, exotic kind of designs that are extremely lightweight and very, very rigid. But look at that, tur that turntable platter there. You see, that's made out of the same material that they used to make the space shuttle out of. And incidentally, it's also lighter in the center and heavier um, at the outside, okay? Um, it's showing you here that the outer part of the plinth can come away so you can get this sort of funky shape. Again, I don't like it, okay? I much prefer the nice sort of rectangular thing here, okay? But that will support your records far better than this jobby here, okay? That's a bit of plastic or something. It's not, um, you know, or very cheap wood. It's not, um, it's not the same level as this at all, okay? Uh, you've got this metal brace here, which uh, sort of strengthens the whole assembly in between the uh, sub platter there. You can see the belt on there, okay? Which um, on the RP1, you see, um, I don't know whether or not you can see where I'm pointing here, but <coughs> this little um, uh, metal kind of bearing here uh, has the, um, it's like a gear shaft kind of thing. Um, and you just flick the belt up and down, okay? Um, with the RP10, you don't have to do that. You've got a box here which connects up to it, which is like a power supply kind of thing. And you can sort of, you, you press the button on there, you can to, to, to switch from 35 to 45. On the RP1, you have to change by flicking this the belt onto a different gear. But you know, this is three and a half grand's worth of turntable. Um, absolutely beautiful. And you know, who's to say? that in years time, whoever it is that's watching this video that's considering what's better than the Crosley Cruiser, you know, yes, an RP1 is a million times better than a Crosley Cruiser, but this is, you know, is, is the absolute bee's knees, absolutely beautiful. But, you know, in order to, in order to, you know, to have one of these things, <coughs> a, you would need much better ampli amplification and speakers than what I've shown you today to hear it but you'd also need a much, much better cartridge. Uh, the cartridge they recommend to go with that is either the Riga Afita 2 moving coil cartridge, which is incredibly expensive, it's a thousand pounds, or the brand new Aphelion, which is about 2,000 um, pounds to go with that. So, you know, probably out of the ballpark of anything that, you know, anyone's suggesting today, but something to dream of. And we all need something to dream of. OK, I'm going to end this video here now. OK, do not buy a Crosley. OK, Crosley, you are the weakest link. Goodbye. <laughs> OK, finishing off there. OK, bye bye.